welcome to Community Conversations. I'm Frederick County Executive Jan Gardner, and I'm very excited today to have as my guest, Councilwoman Jessica Fitzwater. Welcome, Jessica. Hi, Jan. Thanks for having me today. I'm really excited to have you on the program. Uh, obviously, you've been in your role as a county council member for a year and a half now, but I thought maybe you could uh, share with our viewers a little bit about yourself, the district you represent, and what your initial experiences are as a council member. Sure. Well, I ran for office, as you did back in 2014, to represent District 4. District 4 is one of our new council districts with charter government, and it includes the eastern half of Frederick City and some of the surrounding county around that, Mount Pleasant, parts of Lake Linganore, parts of Spring Ridge, and Ballinger Creek. That's my district. Um, so far on the council, I think we've made a lot of progress. As with any change in government, there are growing pains, and I think one of our biggest goals and challenges is to help set the stage for what charter government's going to look like. And I know that you've been working on that same thing as well. Yes. We spent a lot of time on working out our processes and procedures to make sure that we are communicating the best we can with the public and that the public knows what to expect when they come to our meetings, but also that they understand the difference between the legislative and the executive branches and who to go to for what and what types of things actually do come before the council. And it's still new for, uh, for all of us as well as the the public and I think it's something that we'll continue to work on throughout our terms. Now one of the things that is somewhat similar even though um, the roles have changed a little bit um, is that many of the council members and myself serve as liaisons to a variety of boards and commissions throughout the county and I know you serve in that role on several boards and commissions and uh, most of us um, picked some areas that we were interested in and so do you want to talk about uh, your role uh, on boards and commissions? Sure. We had the opportunity to sort of pick the ones we thought might be a good fit for us, and we all sent those to you uh, way back when we first started. And I tried to pick a combination of some that were um, topics or groups that I already felt like I had a good background in and others that were were uh, less familiar to me, but I felt I could benefit and um, from learning about that topic. A good example of that would be I'm the liaison to the airport commission. The airport is in my district, mm -hmm. and although it is the municipal airport, it has a huge impact on the county as a whole, but it certainly was an area that I wasn't really familiar with, so it's been very interesting to learn the about the economic impact that the airport has and some of the challenges and also opportunities that they have coming up. So that's been a really great experience. But I'm also the liaison to several others, including the Human Relations Commission, which looks at issues of social justice and fairness in the community, as well as the Affordable Housing Council, which is a joint council between the city and the county that looks at affordable housing issues. Those are both topics that are very interest uh, interesting to me. I, I really want to make sure that our citizens have everything that they need here in Frederick County and I feel that both those groups are very active in working in that. So I've actually been able to work with those groups to move some legislation forward as well. A great example would be last year working with the Affordable Housing Council and also with the former housing director Jenny Short. We put a bill forth that made it easier for developers to build affordable rental units um, by changing our language a little bit to make it possible for them to use some state and federal tax incentives. And that has actually resulted this year in a developer wanting to amend their development rights and responsibilities agreement to include about 100 affordable rentals in the new Ballinger Run community. I'm really excited that we're going to have that opportunity in that part of the, of the county, and I'm hoping it will incentivize other developers to take that route as well. Right. We do really want, when we pass the moderately priced dwelling unit ordinance a number of years ago, we really wanted to encourage developers to build affordable housing and to integrate it in new development throughout the county. And we're really talking about workforce housing, housing that you know um, younger people and professionals can um, afford. And in, instead, we found a lot of developers were using a, a fee in lieu uh, process and paying a fee instead. So it really is nice to have had you introduce legislation to tweak the law so that now we actually have someone opting to actually build the housing instead of just pay the fee in lieu. I agree, and it's also recognizing that some people are looking for rentals and not home ownership, right. and that gives our community more options, and I think that's always a good thing. 
I think that's a good thing too. Mm -hmm. So now I also know you've been on the Human Relations Commission and you recently brought forth a uh, panel presentation on human trafficking. And I, do you want to speak to that a little bit? Sure. This is an issue um, that unfortunately is one of the most underreported crimes and it's one of the most misunderstood crimes as well because victims of human trafficking often uh, are coerced and they may not even recognize that they're in a, a trafficking situation or they're unable or afraid to come forth because the the captor, the person who's leading the human trafficking ring is holding on to identification papers or holding on to any financial um, information or even their pay and so they're really st stuck in a tough situation. So something that the state is actually working on because the state oh, a couple of years ago put together a state task force on human trafficking is helping local officials both in public health and public safety be able to identify victims so that if somebody say shows up in the emergency room or shows up at the police station that our first responders know what types of questions to ask to help identify these victims so that we can um, prosecute those who are involved. Um, the panel that I brought forth was really I felt had the perspectives of a lot of the different pieces of the puzzle. We had law enforcement, we had somebody, one of our forensic nurses from the hospital, we also had representatives from our Commission for Women and the Human Relations Commission which have taken up this topic over the last few years. So our goal, and you and I have talked about this and been working on this, is to hopefully have a county task force that can help bring all of the the disparate groups together, including our um, some of our nonprofit human um, resource agencies, to really try to tackle this problem and be proactive so that we don't see more of an influx. Unfortunately, Frederick's location with I-70, 270, 81, 95, we're in a location where we could really start to see this become more prevalent than it already is. And so our goal is to bring all those people to the table and see if we can come up with some community protocols and some community solutions. Well, I appreciate that. I thought your panel was very informative. It's a great way to increase awareness of the topic because a lot of people may not even know about it or know that it's something that is happening here. And then, you know, a task force would bring together a way of identifying recommendations as to what we should do first because sometimes when we have a complex issue like this, it's hard to decide how the best way is to approach it. Absolutely. The goal is that this would be a working group, but they would have a deadline and they would come forth with sort of here are your one, two, three, here are our action steps that we want to see the community take, take um, move forward with and who should be in charge. So they'll make recommendations that would perhaps go to law enforcement or recommendations that would go to the hospital, or recommendations that would go to say some of our citizen services um, departments depending on what, what it seems like the best practices are. Very good. So any other thoughts on uh, legislative issues that may be coming forward sometime soon or that are out there? I would just re really encourage um, the public to get in touch with us. Whether you know th that there's a bill or a topic coming forward that you have an opinion on or if there's something that you think we should be looking at that we're not, we are going to do our jobs much better if we hear from the public. A good example of that would be um, something that you, you and the council has been working on, the topic of solar farms. We, it's a complex issue and there are a lot of opinions on all sides about should we allow large commercial solar farms, should we just do more of a personal solar use um, in agricultural land. And the council had a lot of questions and we weren't kind of coming to agreement on which way to move forward and so we had a public hearing just on the topic generally to gather more feedback and also encourage people to send us co written comments if they wanted. And the more information that we can get and the more sides that we can hear from, I think ultimately the legislation will be better for it. Rather than putting something out there and introducing it formally and then having to go back amendment or amend it or pulling it because it's not quite right, we can try to craft it the best that it can be first by hearing from more people. And I, I hope that the council will continue to move forward in that way with legislation. I think with some of these new uh, issues that are out there and complicated issues, it is kind of important to hear from all the stakeholders up front. Um, it is an iterative process and uh, it's hard to know where to land. Now I will say issues like solar, every county in Maryland is struggling uh, with it because it's new to everybody. And it's, it's not much different than what we did years ago when we had um, cell towers because mm -hmm. cell phones were new. They don't seem new anymore, but they were new at one point in time. 
And um, so we're all trying to figure out how to strike the best balance for our communities. And that's what local uh, zoning and local legislation is all about. If we have time, I would want to mention one more thing is okay. one of the things that has been a challenge, I think, for us and the public with this transition is something I mentioned earlier, like who to go to for what. We get a lot of emails and calls, as does your office, with constituent concerns. It could be, you know, there's a big pothole on my street or my recycling wasn't picked up on time or things like that. And we're really happy to, to help citizens with those questions. But ultimately, we're always passing their concerns over to your branch because you're overseeing all of our county departments. So I would just encourage citizens to always feel comfortable reaching out to us, but to know that they can also reach out directly to that department, um, those staff members, because they're gonna be the ones that their feet are on the ground every day dealing with these issues and they'll be able to get answers very quickly. So we are doing our best on the council side to make sure that we answer those questions, but it's one of those things that with the changeover, I think people to know that we really tr try to deal with legislative issues, obviously the budget, but not those day-to-day -day constituent concerns. We're, we're not the fastest way to help solve those problems since we are the legislative branch. Well, I appreciate you bringing that up. The administrative branch, which is the executive branch, uh, really does handle the day-to-day -day functions of the county. So if people have a sign missing or a pothole or the recycling bin or some other service kind of question, really they do need to go to the administrative side. And it is easiest if they go directly to the agency. Mm -hmm. You can find all of them on our webpage. We actually have a link on our, our homepage on our webpage where people can click on it and ask any question. And we do try to respond to those within, uh, or at least acknowledge them within 24 hours so uh, that people can get what they need. I think they can come to us as elected officials when uh, maybe they don't get a response that they find satisfactory or they don't get a response. So we do try to take care of people um, that's what constituent service is all about. Um, but if it's a legislative issue, people should go to their council. Absolutely. <laughs> and make sure that their council member can solve a problem through legislation. Because some problems are solved through legislation. And we've certainly seen already a few legislative issues come up where people have needed a zoning change to be allowed to do something that um, maybe wasn't anticipated in the zoning ordinance in the past. So. So if people want to contact you, how can they get a hold of you? So the best way is really via email because my, um, our staff and myself, we check email daily. Um, phone calls is obviously fine as well, but my email address is jfitzwater at frederickcountymd.gov. And that's the best way to make sure that we can get a response back to, to you, depending on what your question or your issue is. And I'll also mention just today, I was over at Country Meadows talking to some of the residents about charter and about some of the things that council has, has done and I try to have coffee chats or get out into organizations when I can so if there's any organization that would like to come have me come visit just to ask questions or just to chat I'm always open to that too. All right well thank you I think you've done a great job as a county councilwoman and I really have enjoyed working with you and we'll look forward to continuing to work with you over the next couple of years. Thank you and thanks for having me today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, thank you for uh, viewing Community Conversations today and learning a little bit more about Council Member Jessica Fitzwater. She does represent District 4, which is the uh, east side of the city of Frederick and some of the surrounding areas in the county. So feel free to contact her if you have a legislative issue or an event in that part of the county. Thank you for joining us.